Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, May 2nd, 2021. The title of our Sunday School lesson is Speaking Truth to Power. And the background scripture is from the First Kings, chapter 22. The Sunday School material that we are using is the NIV Standard Lesson Commentary 2020-2021. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be studying Prophet Micaiah as he talked to the two kings, King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat. Help us to understand our lesson. Guide us as we go through the scriptures. Help us to grow in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, speaking truth to power. Ang sabihin ng katotohanan sa mga makapangyarihan. Year at a glance. In the first quarter, for three months, we talk about God's world and God's people, all in the book of Genesis, September, October, November. In the second quarter, our love for God and call in the New Testament. All of these are available in our office. If you need a copy, you can just ask the office. Quarter at a glance. For this quarter, this is our theme. Prophets faithful to God's covenant. And for today, lesson nine, we are going to look at Prophet Micaiah, 853 B.C. 1,000 years of prophet and prophetic leadership from 1500 B.C. to 405 B.C. From Moses, Joshua, Elijah, Micaiah, Obadiah, Jonah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hulda, Ezekiel, Ezra, and Nehemiah. In the, uh, in the month of March, March, the same was faithful prophets. So we have Moses, Joshua, Hulda. Here it is Obadiah and Elijah for the month of April. We are through with that. The same was prophets of restoration. Isaiah, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Jeremiah. Today, for the month of May, the theme is Courageous Prophets of Change. And we start with speaking truth to power. This will be Micaiah. And we have four other weeks to talk about Courageous Prophets of Change. Okay, the setting here is that Micaiah was summoned by King Ahab uh, to, ad to seek advice with regards to an impending war with Ramos and Gilead. As our pattern in our study, we go through the scriptures first, and then later on we go back and go through this verse by verse. First King chapter 22, verse 15. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramos, Gilead, or not? Attack and be victorious, he answered, for the Lord will give it into, into the king's hand. Pagdating niya sa harapan ng hari, siya ay tinanong, Micaiah, sasalakayin pa namin ang Ramos, Galaad. Salakayin po ninyo at magwawagi kayo. Magtatagumpay kayo sa tulong ni Yahweh. The king said to him, 
How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Ngunit siya ay muling kaninong ng hari, ilang ulit bakitang panunumpain upang wala kang sasabihin sa ngalan ni Yahweh kundi ang buong katotohanan at bawang katotohanan lamang. Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. Kaya't nangusap noon si Micaiah, Nakita kong nagkawatak-watak ang hukbo ng Israel. Nagkalat sa kabundukan, parang tupang walang pastol. Kaya't sabi ni Yahweh, wala rito ang may-ari. Bayan siya ang lahat sa kanila'y magsiwi. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he never prophesied anything good about me, but only bad? Kaya't sinabi ng hari ng Israel kay Josaphat, di ba't sinabi ko na sa iyo na kailan may hindi niya ako binigyan ng mabuting pahayag, lagi na lamang masama. May kaya continued, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting in, on His throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around Him on His right and on his left. Ngunit nagpatuloy si Micaiah, pakinggan ninyo si Yahweh, nakita ko siyang nakaupo sa kanyang luklukan, nasa kanyang harapan, sa kaliwa at sa kanan, ang buong hukbo ng langit. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Nagtanong siya, sino ang hihikayatin kay Akab? Sino ang hihikayat kay Akab na salakayin ang Ramut Galaad? Kanya-kanyang sagot ang mga espiritu. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. Ngunit mayroong isang tumayo at nagsalita ng ganito, Ako po ang hihikayat kay Akab. Sa panong paraan, tanong ni Yahweh. By what means, the Lord asked, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. Pupunta po ako ron at magiging spiritong sinungaling na magsalita sa pamamagitan ng kanyang mga propeta, sagot ni Yes, ng spirito. Ikaw ang humikay sa kanya at magtatagumpay ka, sabi ni Yahweh. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. At patuloy ni Mikaya, ayan, kita mo kung paanong nagsalita ang espiritu ng kasinungalingan sa bibig ng iyong mga propeta. Ngunit si Yahweh ang nagtakda ng iyong Kapahamakan. The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and send him back to Amon, the ruler of the city, and to Joas, the king's son. Pinagutos ng hari, balik siya sa gobernador ng lungsod kay Amon at kay prinsipe Joas and say, This is what the king says. Put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Sabihin ninyo sa kanila na ibilanggo ang taong ito at huwag pakainin kundi tinapay at tubig hanggang sa aking maluwalhating pagbabalik. Micaiah declared, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, Mark my words, All you people. Sinabi ni Micaiah, kapag kayo nakabalik ng buhay, hindi nga si Yahweh ang nagsalita sa pamamagitan ko. Key verse, 1 Kings 
22:14 my kaya said as surely as the lord lives i can tell him only what the lord tells me okay so lesson eight after participating participating in this lesson this learner will be able to identify the roles of ahab jehoshaphat and micaiah uh, ano ba yung mga role ni ahab ni jehoshaphat ni micaiah dito sa event na to dapat kayang kaya nating isalaysay Number two, compare and contrast how each of those three related to God's truth. Compare and contrast. Ano ang kanilang mga reaksyon doon sa salita ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ni Mikaya? Ano ang reaksyon ng bawat isa? Ano ang kanilang katungkulan? Ano ang kanilang pagtingin doon sa Salita ng Diyos na dala ni Micaiah. Create a plan to pursue and apply God's knowledge in the week ahead. A challenge for each and every one of us. Paano natin gagampanan yung kautusan ng Diyos, yung kagustuhan ng Diyos sa bawat isa natin sa loob ng linggong susunod. Introduction, truth distorted, lesson context, introduction. Then we we go to Roman numeral number one, sarcastic prophecy. Roman numeral number two, the sincere prophecy. Roman numeral number three, a sure prophecy. Then we have the conclusion. Okay, we will take all of this, all this outline, we will cover this during the duration of our Sunday school. Okay, introduction. Truth distorted. Have you ever sought out counsel that would tell you what you want to hear rather than truth so that you could press forward with your own agenda? Oh, alam na alam natin to. Gustong gusto natin pumunta doon sa mga tao na yes man lang sa ating sasabihin. Kung ikaw ay isang administrador, kung isa ay isang politician, kung ikaw ay isang hari, presidente, ang gusto mong kabinete, yes man. But, take note, here is an example. Si George Washington, the first president of the United States, wala siyang makokopihan, siyang unang presidente. But, when he chose The cabinet, it is from an elected group. Iba-iba ang pinanggalingan, iba-iba ang background, iba sa doon sa iba-ibang parte ng Amerika siya kumuha ng kanyang kabinete. So therefore, dahil iba-iba, they have different views, but they have one intention. They have one intention, but different views. Different views. So therefore, dahil varied ang opinion, Very rich on discussion ang mga decision ni Washington. Yung first president, ang tawag ay more informed and wise. Dahil narinig niya lahat, mga anggulo, mga iba-ibang opinion, ang tawag doon ay informed and wise judgment. Unfortunately, Ahab did not make similar decisions. He surrounded himself with false prophets who told him whatever he wanted to hear. Yun lang gusto niya marinig. Si Aring Ahab. This lesson focuses on one prophet who refused to compromise the truth. Pero, ang lesson natin ay tungkol dito sa isang propeta na hindi natitinag kung ano ang sinabi ng Diyos, yun lang. Ang sasabihin niya, yun lang. He refused to compromise no matter what. Take note, very hostile ang kapaligiran. So, naka-focus naka ang pag-aaral natin dito sa propetang ito. Ang pangalan niya ay Micaiah. 
Okay, lesson context. Then lesson context. First and second Samuel and first second Kings. In the Greek version, translated before Christ, these four books are known as first, second, third, and fourth kingdoms. Yan. Eh, konting background tayo. Kasi itong first, second Kings, inuulit ulit yan doon sa first and second chronicles. Inuulit. Pero nung araw, ito talaga yung basa dyan. Four kingdoms. Why? First, yung first Samuel, yan, si Haring Saul. Second Samuel, si Haring David. First king, yung first half niyan, si Haring Solomon. Yung second half ng first king hanggang sa katapusan ng second king, yun na yung mga nag-divide divide na yung nag-divide na yung Israel the the northern tribe with 10 tribes and the southern tribe with 2 tribes there were 19 kings in the north in the south 19 kings and one queen so a total of 39 rulers after Solomon so yun yung istorya diba for 120 years iisa ang hari iisa ang Israel but after Kasi 40 years, 40 years, 40 years, tig po 40 years ito eh. Si Saul, 40 years, David, 40 years, Solomon, 40 years, 120 years. Those were the glorious days of Israel. After that, na-divide na sila. Na-divide na. Na-divide. 39 rulers all in all. And although it's natural to categorize this as books of history, we do well to remember that no book of the Bible seeks merely to give us a his, history lesson. Although, sabi nga dyan, di ba? 5, 12, there are 12 books of history. Although ang tawag dyan na history, well, it is not just, it is not merely to give history. But what? Every book in the Bible intends to tell us something about God. Yun yung intention, yung pagkakasulat. Yun yung pagkakasulat nitong uh, Old Testament, and of course, the New Testament. The Old Testament narratives, one and two kings included, with, were passed down with the intention of revealing truth about the relationship between God and His people. Relationship between God and His people. So, from the very beginning, that, uh, uh, from the time of Abraham, from the time of Abraham, tapos yung mga anak, mga anak, mga anak ni Abraham, etc., etc., God was already there. And the relationship, the, the covenant between God and, and His people, in a istorya, yan yung istorya nitong Old Testament narratives na to. The books we think of as history address these issues by telling the story of God's people. Picking up with the conquest of the promised land in Joshua and ending with exile in 2 Kings. Ayan. Diba? Nung si Joshua conquered, they, they occupied promised land and then pass forward tayo the end of the 2 Kings, they were out of the promised land. Exiled na sila. Collectively, the books tell the story of Israel's persistent rebellion against terms of the covenant, divine judgment in the form of curses prescribed in Deuteronomy, Israel's return, God's mercy. Yan, i-memorize natin to. Ito yung, ito yung paulit-ulit na istorya, paulit-ulit na istorya. Ha? Rebellion. Ha? They disobey God. And then, divine judgment. Pinarurusahan sila ng Diyos. Tapos, anong nangyayari? They, they, they return. They return. Forgiveness. Uh, they, they ask for forgiveness. And then, resulting mercy. Yun, yun, yung, yun yung buhay nila. Rebellion, may judgment. Tapos, bumalik ulit sila. Or, tapos, mercy. Tapos, rebellion ulit. Parang cycle. These are the four cycles. Rebellion, divine judgment, and then there is return, they return, and then there is mercy. Okay? So, yan yung istorya. Paulit-ulit. 
First Kings chapter 22 is conversation between two kings. Ito, alam nyo, yung northern at saka yung southern, magkaaway talaga yan eh. Palaging may alitan. But, at this point in time, magka, magkakampi sila. Why? Mangyari yung dalagang anak ng northern king, yung dalagang anak ni King Ahab, inasawa niya yung binatang anak naman ni Jehoshaba, naging magbalae sila. So, magkakampi ngayon sila. And, they are about to go to war. They are about to go to war. Magkakampi sila. But, alam nyo, kung nung araw, palaging kinukonsulta yung mga prophets bago pumunta sa gera. Whether it is the Yahweh or whether it is an idol. But, they have to go to, to, a, to a God or to Yahweh to consult before going to war. So, ito ngayon, tina, tinawag ngayon ni ni King Ahab si Micaiah. Ayan. Ayan, no? Consulting gods before battle was customary. Example, for Samuel, he inquired of the Lord. The Lord answered, Go attack the Philistines and save Kaila. So, si King Ahab, meron siyang sariling mga propeta. 400 false prophets. Ang tawag ay 400 false prophets. So, he kinunsulta, anong gagawin? Ah, mananalo ka ang uh, Panginoon, mananalo ka, mahal namin hari. Go! All the 400 prophets in unison. In unison. Yeah. But King Jehoshaphat was unimpressed. Ang pagkakaiba kasi nito si King Ahab at si King Jehoshaphat. King Ahab is, you know, he, he, he worship idols. King Jehoshaphat, this is the southern, the king of the southern tribe. He is a faith, he is faithful to Yahweh. Magkaiba sila. Eh, hindi siya mapakali dun sa, dun sa pinagsasabi ng 400 prophets. Sabi niya, he asked Ahab, if he didn't have a prophet of the true God who could be consulted. Wala bang propeta ng Propeta na Yahweh dito na pwede natin konsultahin. Sabi niya. Sabi niya, ah, meron. Ito nga, ito nga si Micaiah. Tawagin niyo. So, tinawag na. Ito na ngayon yung lesson natin. Tinawag na. Nag-uusap na sila. So, yung scenery dito, Micaiah, the prophet, there is King uh, Ahab, King of Northern Tribe, nandun siya sa kanyang trono. King Jehoshaphat, King of the Southern Tribe, nasa trono. The 400 prophets of of uh, King Ahab, mga false prophets na andun, nakatingin. Siyempre, yung mga yung mga ibang tauhan, mga ibang uh, panauhin dun sa court ng hari na andun. It was a very hostile crowd against Micaiah. Parang nag-iisa lang si Micaiah dun. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramot Gilead or not? Ang sagot ni Micaiah, attack and be victorious. He answered, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. Take note of the of the title of our first uh, Roman numeral, sarcastic prophecy. It is not the true prophecy. It is not a true prophecy. It is it is sarcasm. You know, before this, I have despised Micaiah because of the series of negative reports that the prophet had against the king. Before this, marami ng inkwentro, may mga inkwentro na itong si King Ahab at saka si Micaiah. Palaging negative itong mga sinasabi ni Micaiah kay King Ahab because this is a prophet of God and Ahab is an, siya ang the worst king together with his wife, Queen Jezebel. They were the worst, the worst leader, the worst king. But uh, compared to other kings of Israel and Judah, this is the worst king. Uh, kaya talaga puro masama yung kanya yung sinasabi sa kanya, etc. But Micaiah surprised the king Ahab, telling him exactly what he wanted to hear. Wow! Biglang nagbago ah. Mukang uh, mukang maganda yata to, ah. Perhaps Micaiah was exhausted from telling Ahab God's sovereign truth just to have it ignored. Napagod na rin siguro itong si Maikaya. Sige. Dukuhin ko na nga rin ito. Verse 16. The king said to him, 
How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Uy, uy, magsabi ka ng totoo. Magsabi ka ng totoo. Yan. King Ahab interpreted Micaiah's affirming response as bald-faced lie. The king ironically demanded Micaiah fulfill his prophetic duty. Ano ba yung prophetic duty? Ano ba yung duty ng mga, mga prophets? To tell only what God told them to say. No more, no less. Yan yung Deuteronomy 18.18. Kung ano lang ang sinabi sa'yo, walang kulang, walang sobra. Kaya sabi niya, oh, sabihin mo yung gawin mo yung trabaho mo. Yung totoo lang. Verse 17. Now, Roman numeral number 2. Censor prophecy, God's truth. Now, this is God's truth. Part 1. Part 1. Pag may part 1, may part 2. Ano yung part 1? Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. Without a shepherd. Who is the shepherd? King Ahab. This is saying, the shepherd is dead. Micaiah dropped his act, causing atmosphere in the room to immediately darken. Parang drama. Naging drama. Sinabi niya, Israel will be thrown into as much disarray as sheep without a shepherd. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he never prophesied anything good about me? Now, kinakausap ngayon ni King Ahab si King Diyos. Sapat sabi sa iyo eh, palaging uh, masama yung mga sinasabi nito sa akin eh. You see here? What is wrong with that statement? For Ahab, Micaiah was not a legitimate advisor. Tinawag pa, pero hindi naman pala paniniwalaan. Ahab's heart was so ardent against God that he was able to dismiss my castle as just one more bad thing. Diba? Ito na sana yung pagkakataon ni King Ahab na bumalik sa Diyos. Pero hindi eh. Ahab's heart was so hardened against God. Sabi sa iyo, walang sasabihin mabuti ito eh. What should be the, what should be the reaction of King Ahab? It should be just like, how was his reaction when Naboth, the owner of the vineyard, was killed. Diba? Pinapatay ni Jezebel yung si Naboth. Tapos, para makuha ni King Ahab yung vineyard. When King Ahab learned about this, anong ginawa ni? He repented. Ha? Nag, uh, suot siya ng sako, nag-fasting, etc. Sabi ng God, wow! Maganda ito nakikita ko ah. Sige. Hindi ka mamamatay. Patawarin kita. Sinabi sa kanya yan. Eh. Before this event. That was before this event. Pero, bumalik na uli siya sa dati niya. Ngayon, ayaw niya. Dapat sana eh. Dapat sana eh. Natinag siya. Diba? King Jehoshaphat's non-reaction is equally disturbing. Ito naman, yung isang isang Anong tawag dito? Yung uh, tatlo silang uh, personality. Ito naman yung isang personality. Take note, King Ahab, worshiping the idol. King Jehoshaphat, worshiping Yahweh. Pero ano ang disturbing, equally disturbing sa nangyari? The non-reaction of King Jehoshaphat. Pinabayaan lang siya, tumahimik lang. He kept quiet. What, what should have been done? Dapat, uy, uy, makinig ka. Dapat ganun sinabi niya. He failed to advise the other king. He failed to advise the other king. So we see two kings, one idolatrous and one godly who witnessed the testimony of God's true prophet and for their own reason, refused to alter their full hardy plans. Dalawang hari, isang idolatrous, isang godly, Pero, parihong hindi nakinig. Tinuloy pa rin yung kanilang plano. Verse 19, Micaiah continued, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. 
I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. Ito, ito sabi ngayon, part 2. Part 2. Yung part 1 kanina ay tungkol sa kamatayan ni King Ahab. Yung part 2, it is now talking of the Lord God alone sitting on His throne. Yan ngayon ang issue naman dito. At sa ngayon ang nagsasalita. At napapaligiran siya ng mga multitudes of heaven. But take note, it is only God who is sitting. All others are creation. All others are worshiping Him. To reveal that what followed came from God. Yeah. Kaya, kaya yung term, sinabi doon, the word of God, the word of the Lord, it is to show that it is not the word of, of uh, Micaiah, but it is a word coming from God. And that God is sitting alone, it means that God is sovereign over everything real or imagined. And yung mga angels, it may refer to heavenly bodies or angels, but take note, all of this are worshiping God. Yung mga heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, ito yung mga sinasamba ng mga pagan nations. Verse 20, The Lord said, Sincere prophecy, The Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another. This is the proclamation of God. What is the proclamation of God? That King Ahab will die. This verse makes explicit what was implied. Ahab, Ahab would die on the battlefield. Such a sentence was just since Ahab had followed the ways of his evil queen in the northern kingdom. So, ang sinasabi rito, it is, it is but just for him to die. Why? Because he brought the whole northern tribe to away from God. Together with his queen, Queen Jezebel, they worship idols. They turn their back to God. They deserve to die. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, said, I will entice him. So from among those, may nag-volunteer. I will lure King Ahab into battle. I will, uh, I will entice him so that he will go to battle. Verse 22, how? By what means? The Lord asked, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. He said, You will succeed in enticing him. So, how will they deceive? Yun ang kinukwento rito. Gagamitin ko yung mga propeta niya para sila ang magagamit. The Lord giving approval to this plan is one example of God's sovereign right to judge evil doers. Although I have had humbled himself following the theft of Naboth, all, yan, ito yung, ito yung pinento natin kanina. Naboth's vineyard meron na siyang karanasan eh. Nung bumalik siya sa Diyos, pinat- pinatawad siya eh. But this time, hindi siya nakinig sa Diyos. All habits apparently die hard. Yung mangyayari sa kanya, dahil na rin sa kanyang kasalanan. And God is allowing him to continue in his sinful way. Ahab did not want to listen to the prophet of the Lord preferring the pleasant prophecies of his old prophets. Ironically, if I had chose to listen, the prophecy would not have come true. Nandun yun sa istorya ng istorya ng bawat, bawat mga generation, even before him, basta bumalik lang sila sa Diyos, God is merciful. He will forgive. So now the Lord has put a deceiving the spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Micaiah presented Ahab with a message of judgment. But implicit in that message was the opportunity for repentance. Compare Jonah 3. Eh, alam niyo sa Jonah 3, di ba? 
God already declared that the people of Nineveh will be destroyed. However, dahil kay Jonah, huh, the, the king, through the king, the, the king lead the people you know, to ask God for mercy. And God was merciful, hindi natuloy yung kanyang pre-announce na destruction. Same case of, my, uh, of Ahab here. It was an opportunity for repentance. Ahab was given an opportunity to admit, but he did not. He chose otherwise. Oh, that is the story of Jonah. God did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. Why? Because they repented. The Lord used Ahab's character in the deference of the king's prophets to deceive the man. God never lies, but he does work through humans to accomplish his purposes, whether they do good or ill. It, yung hari, ay, God, God did not cause Ahab to lie. God did not cause Ahab to sin. What happened here is, well, God just allowed them to do what they want. Yun yung historian ko. God also never does moral evil, but he can put events into motion that from a human perspective are catastrophic. In this case, the deceiving spirit intensified human dynamics already in play. E, yung ginamit na spirito, the, the play was already there. The, the sin was already committed. It was going on even before the spirit came to came and appear and uh, you know uh, uh, lure them to say otherwise. It was already in play. Verse 26. The king of Israel then ordered, "Take Micaiah and send him back to Amon, the ruler of the city, and to Joas, the king's son." Yeah. Oh, the linyo itong si Micaiah don sa sa mayor, ruler of the city. At doon sa prinsipe. Doon. Ikulong. <laughs> Why? Why? Ahab's response was anything but one of repentance. Hindi nag-repent. Pinakulong. Bakit? Take note. Papunta sila sa gera. Eh kapag ka pinabaya, pina, pinabayaan itong si Micaiah na maglakad lang, a free person, what will he do? Magnangangawayan, sabi niya. And it will, you know, it will affect the moral, the, the morale of the soldiers. Verse, verse 27, this is what the king says. Put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread until I return safely. Kulong nyo, tubig lang at tinapay. Hanggang makabalik ako. Ha, sinasabi dito ni Ahab, he will be triumphant and he will return. Pero yung proclamation ng Diyos, only his man would return because Ahab will die in battle. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Kailangan, kailangan, Ikulong si Maikaya dahil kung hindi, magnangangawa yan. Ha? And it could lead to poor troop morale. Okay, very important yan. Sa sundalo, kapag uh, pagkamahina ang loob, tatakbo. Tatakbo sa gera. Pero kung high moral yan, kahit mamatay, ha? lalaban. Verse 28, Maikaya declared, If you ever return, Safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Pagka bumalik ka, hindi nagsalita sa akin ng Diyos. Then, he looked at everybody. Mark my words, all you people, tandaan niyo to, kayong lahat. Maikaya was so confident in what he heard from God 
that they challenge those present to be witnesses. Ahab's death would not only vindicate Micaiah, but God as well. Ahab died just as Micaiah said. Micaiah's fate in prison is unknown. So, namatay. Namatay si Ahab. Ano nangyari kay Micaiah? Sa kulungan? Hindi natin alam. Conclusion. Today's passage illustrates the timeless struggle to relate to the truth properly. Individuals in today's lesson provide us with three instances that people exposed to God's truth can take. Yeah. So, mayroong tatlong, tatlong personality dito sa pinag-aaralan natin. Tignan natin isa-isa. How, how do they relate to the Word of God? How do they relate to, to the Word of God? King Ahab muna. King Ahab is easily vilified as disgraced due to his idolatry, miscarriage of judgment, antipathy toward God's prophet. However, whenever we find ourselves willfully in relation to the truth, we see shades of Ahab within our spirits. It is a lesson for us. Willfully in rebellion to the truth. Alam natin ang katotohanan. Pero, naghihimagsik tayo. Alam natin kung anong dapat gawin. But, we do otherwise. When we find ourselves in this precarious state and are then admonished by concerned friends, we should realize that this is a form of God's mercy. Kapag nangyayari sa atin yun, masama ang pinakinapunta natin. Kung may gagamitin ang Diyos, para pagsabihan tayo, this is a form of God's mercy. Yan yung lesson natin kay King Ahab. Yes, we need to be alert to possible Ahab-like tendencies in others. Ito naman. Kung mayroong mga iba naman na ganyan din. Kanina, tayo yung uh, na, naihiwalay ng landas. Kung may ibang naihiwalay ng landas, sabi ito, be prepared to admonish those who clearly ignore God. Yun naman ang karapatan. Ay, yun naman yung, yung ating dapat gawin. Pagsabihan din sila. Ito naman si Jehoshaphat. We have a case study of a person who desired to please God, but lack consistent, faithful, follow through. This is Jehoshaphat naniniwala sa Diyos. Kaya lang, kaya lang, hindi continuous, hindi spontaneous yung kanyang pagkatao. Naandun yung, naandun yung pagkakataon na pagsabihan sa anayon niya si King Ahab, ayaw. All believers, from senior ministers to occasional few fillers can find themselves walking in the king's shoes. Yeah. Tayo lahat, maging yung kung sino man yung ating pinakapinuno dito sa simbahan at yung mga tuwarating lang sa linggo para umupo lang. Lahat tayo nagkakaroon ng pagkakataon. Nagkakaroon ng pagkakataon para sana i-share, matulungan yung mga humihiwalay ng landas. That happens when we are hesitant for whatever reason to execute a God-given plan. So when we encounter a fellow believer in a similar situation, the correct response is offer encouragement and wise counsel. Si Jehoshaphat, hindi niya napagsabihan si King Ahab. Tayo rin, kung may nakita tayo, dapat we should be ready to offer encouragement and wise counsel. O ito naman si Micaiah. Micaiah was bound by simple adage that he was only to preach the word that God gave him and not add or subtract. Eh, kasi yun yung role niya. Yung role niya ay prophet. Anong role ng prophet? Sabihin lang kung ano ang gustong sabihin ng Diyos through him. Walang kulang, walang bawas. May kaya's ability to think and speak independently in the face of hostile crowd. Nandun siya, nag-iisa siya. Galit si King Ahab sa kanya. King Jehoshaphat, wala lang, bystander lang, 400 prophets 
ni King Ahab. It is a very, very hostile crowd. Nag-iisa siya rin. Pero, matatag. He has the ability to think and speak independently. The prophets of spokenness remind us that speaking truth can result in a very negative consequences. Minsan, pag nagsasalita, especially outside the, this country, there are many countries. But they used to tell. Micaiah was aware of this, but what is still, but was he still obedient to God? Kahit na napaka-delikado, Micaiah is still teach and tell the truth about the message of God. Na ikulong siya, hindi natin alam kung ano nangyari sa kanya. We can build a life centered in truth through the regular study of God's Word. Paano natin malalaman ang God's truth? Paano? So ito, regular study of God's Word. Simba, simba tayo. Bible study. May cell group. May mga Christian fellowship. One at a time. One opportunity at a time. Unti, unti, we will grow. Unti, unti, we will grow. We will build up. We will build up. Many people today, as in my case, they prefer to question God's truth rather than their own sinful patterns. Yan, totoo yan eh, no? Bakit naman sa akin nangyari to? God. <laughs> as if wala tayong kasalanan, as if napakalinis natin. No question natin ang Diyos. Sometimes, when we question God, is as if we are legitimizing ungodly behavior. Parang sinasabi pa natin na tama naman yung ginagawa ako eh. We must echo Apostle Paul's word, let God be true, but every man a liar. Romans 3.4 Our commitment to truth is measured in our actions. Let's pray. Lord, uh, thank you for bringing us this lesson. The lesson we learn from the life of King Ahab. The, Lord, the lesson we learn from the life of King Jehoshaphat. And the, the lesson we learn from Prophet Micaiah. Help us, Lord, to be brave. Well, so that we can speak to others the truth about you. Help us to be true warriors in your army. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The last slide, May 9, 2021. This will be our uh, Sunday school, Offering Hope for the Future. The scripture will be Isaiah 29. Magandang umbaga po at maraming po salamat.